Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. Welcome to Generally Speaking with your host, Jen Young, on Nightlight Radio. We're so glad you could join us tonight. Certainly it's an interesting topic, one that I can't wait to hear what she has to say about it. So without further ado, here's your host, Jen Young. Thank you, Barbara. Welcome to Generally Speaking. And our topic tonight is dreams. Um what we've put tonight is all I have to do is close my eyes and dream of you. But is it really that simple? We are often asked if our departed loved ones will visit us in dreams, will messages be left? I don't know. Um, and how do we interpret dreams? Dreams are individual as we are, and the meaning behind or within them can be as simple or as complex as we make it, or are they? Um, I have had recurring dreams. I've had dreams that I wake up laughing from and dreams that make me cry. So um, I hope Barb and I tonight can have a really good discussion about all things dreamy. <laughs> what do you think, Barb? <laughs> dreamy. I think that's a dreamy. Well, that takes a whole other category onto the table for sure. Um, it does, doesn't it? It it surely does, and I don't think those are, I don't think those are dreams. Those are just wishes. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I, I I think the element of of dreams and dreaming. The older we get, the more complex we get because there are so many other levels that have to be applied to the dreams. You know, are you know we we are theoretically all the people in our dreams, so what does that, you know, how do we relate to those different aspects? Is the dream wish fulfillment, or is it a prediction of the future? Or, I mean, it's, it's, there's so many different things a dream can be. It, it's important, I, I think, you know, you, I think you keep a dream journal of sorts. Um, I have from time to time. It's a great thing to do. I just forget to do it. Um but but it's our dreams are really another way of getting into a deeper level of consciousness and and they're a tool if you're on a spiritual journey that that it's an important tool to incorporate into the 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 journey that we're on that's true um you know i i look at um at at, at the dreams mm. um I've gone blank here. I'm I'm trying. I've got the words. I'm starting to stutter, and I hate stuttering. Um, And, yes, hate is a really strong word. I'm reminded of that by my grandchildren. We don't (laughs) use that word. It's frustrating when I I lose the words, and um, I'm a stutterer. But I don't think you lose them. I don't think you lose them. I think that, that sometimes people are so intense on using the most appropriate word 
that they have a blank of every other word they know. And, you know, it happens to me frequently. If I, you know, just as I'm going to sleep, I'll think of something like um, an old um, sick, uh, an old TV show that was on that had a guy that, it was a, he was a detective and he had a white bird and I can't remember who, his name and it has been killing me. Now I know that I can Google it and probably will get the answer immediately, but I just I don't want to do that. I don't want to give in. But I and I know that at one point he was arrested for possibly murdering his wife. I you know I, I there's a whole history about him and I just can't. You know, and and I don't think it's ADHD, and I don't think it's memory loss because I'm old. I think it's just you know it wasn't necessary to remember it, so I'm not. But it's bugging me, so now I'm going to have to at some point in time just Google it. It's really going to frustrate me. And, and, and I know. And then I'll then I'll sit back and say, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. So there you go. But there we go. It, no, so, I'm glad you know, we have what, Google because it it certainly is is quite an easy tool now than picking up four or five different encyclopedias and thumbing through them or a dictionary and thumbing through it. Um, it's such a handy tool, right? Oh, it is. And my problem is that usually when I'm looking for one thing, I, I um, did you ever what was it Up? Did you ever watch the cartoon Up, the movie? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and and I don't know if it's in that or not, but it's 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 the one where where there's a talking dog or something, and and um, every now and then he you know he'll be very wise and suddenly he'll go squirrel, and you know everybody's head turns and everybody goes in another direction. That's how I am with with um, looking through Google and stuff like that. I often get distracted by something else, you know, a squirrel. Okay, let's look at this. This looks really cool. And and I lose my I, – I, I get lost in many places. I get lost in um, Mary Joyce's um, amazing website, uh, Sky Ships Over Cashiers, because she's got so many different topics and so many archives there, and I just – I will get lost in it for hours and then forget what I was looking for in the first place. Well, that's so, the way I am, and and that's what um, Ron says is you've squirreled again, or the kids have said, you know, I asked you a simple question, Mom, and you've talked about three different things that have nothing to do with your question, and um, <laughs> or my question, and all I'm asking you is, you know, whatever, and I just start laughing, and I said, well, it's a long way to get to it, but I do get to it in the end. Um, <laughs> Well, something like the interpreting dreams, right? It's, um, yeah. It's quite funny because um, I, I, I'm asked about dreams a lot, um, not as frequently um, as I did because I think COVID um, did a number on us and trying to um, socialize and talk and move about has, I don't want to say crippled us, but it has crippled us in the sense that we don't get out and we don't do what we did. So, um, but I really don't like that word. Stifled us is perhaps a better word. Um, But looking at our dreams and, um, well, when we're dreaming or asking for dreams do you ask for dreams that's a good one do you ask for dreams when you go to sleep at night do you ask for a specific dream do you ask to connect through your dreams i i would say a hundred percent not usually um i will i will lay down and you know there will be things that i didn't have time to deal with during the day that i will sort of go over in my head and and you know, try to put some sense to or some order to. Um, I, I, I program my dreams. I, I am very much many times in control of where I'm going and what I'm looking at. And then there are times when 
a television show or a commercial has managed to work its way into my subconsciousness. And then I I start to um, perseverate on it and apply it to my life. Usually it's one of those advertisements that, you know, I I thought I had I had sinuses, but it turned out I needed a heart replacement. And then I kind of wonder, well, I have sinuses. Maybe, I'm, I'm a functional hypochondriac here. Maybe my heart <laughs> needs to be replaced. And, so, yeah, and you know, and, and that'll take me hours to finally get up, walk around, and say, this is ridiculous. Um, let's just find another topic and go into that, please. And uh, sometimes it takes two or three times to to redo it, but but I will. Um, so. Uh, I, you know, it, it's knowing that I'm sensitive, knowing that I'm intuitive, knowing that I can sort of predict probabilities in people's lives. I tend to not ask for myself because um, I really want to be surprised. So I don't ask for I don't ask for anything. Ever you know, on a rare occasion. Something will happen, and I'll say, you know, I need an explanation for this. What the hell were you thinking? And you know, and usually I'll get an answer. But uh, and in the summertime, for the longest time over the last couple of summers, um, before I I went to bed, I I had a wonderful man on on the show. His name was uh, Rabbi Dosick, and he's written mm-hmm. a wonderful, wonderful book. Everybody should read it. It's a fabulous book. I can't remember the title, but but Rabbi Dasik has written this wonderful book, and in it he talks about talking to God, sitting on a bench, talking to God as dog is out walk as God is out walking his dog, and I I, re, I started for the longest time because the, the summer evenings are so beautiful here that I would sit on on my porch, um, at, late at night one, two, three in the morning, and I would just literally out loud, out loud say, okay, God, so here's what's going on, and I need some explanation. And then as I was signing off, it would be, you know, give my best to Mrs. God. And, you know, when I was when I had the rabbi on the um, interviewing him, he, he talked about God was walking his dog, and he sat with God on the park bench, and they talked. And I said, so if you have a dog, then Mrs. God must have uh, a cat. And you know, he was quiet for a while. He said, well, you know, that all makes perfectly good sense. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I would I would say, please give my best to Mrs. God. And I would say good night. And that would be my prayer. I would literally be sitting there talking to God on the back porch. But don't – see, I – I'm inclined to agree with you, but don't. I was talking to a fellow a few years ago, and I think his mom was quite religious. He wasn't. His children asked him about God. This is not dreams now, and he said um, he believed we all we all were God. He mm-hmm. said, "I just tell my kids we're all God," and he started laughing like it was a big joke. And I said, "No, I agree with you." We are but one God. God lives in all of us. So, right. um, to me, yeah, right. And that, to me, that's not so far fetched. And um, so, why would well, you know, Mrs. It, God it, have a cat, right? Yeah, and and it took the place of. I stopped to think for a minute. You know, so many people go through the Our Father and all of that, and how boring it must be to have millions of people saying the same thing over and over again to you every night, why not be physically present when you're talking to God? And and if God is a part of us, then, then it's a familiar, it's a relative. And why not sit on the back porch and talk to God instead yeah. of, you know, getting down on your knees and praying? And, see, I don't believe personally that we should totally ask for something as much as talk something out with God. And, you know, if, if if something has happened that seems unusual and unique, okay, so I know there was a point to this. There, uh, there has to have been a point. wouldn't have happened if it hadn't had a point. So what is the purpose of this? And, you know, you go through the talking it out, 
and you yourself work it out. God doesn't give you any instructions because we have free will. Mm-hmm. You know, and whatever you do with the situation, you're going to do. And it's there's a reason for it. You're working on something. You're learning something. You're growing. And it's always of, of a positive nature. It, you're not being punished ever. Challenged, absolutely. Punished, absolutely never. And And so... My concept of God is someone that I talk to on a pretty regular basis, but I don't pray to him because he's a part of me. No, I understand what you're saying. I, I totally get that. I've, um, I'm have i not going to say struggled. I did struggle as a teenager with it. I've had this discussion lately with a couple of really good friends. Um, you know, uh, it is something that sits deep in my solar plexus wherever one wants to call it and it's just a deep knowing that you know we can sit and and talk to um, the creator to God to the bigger being whatever one wants to Uh call it um, and have the conversation I came to the conclusion years and years ago um, in 1978 or 79, to be exact, that we were given free will, and um, that uh, I didn't really believe in God or whatever. It was a big internal struggle I had um, because of free will. Well, I think and Jen, a lot of people, a lot of a lot of people, go through that and then they move beyond that. But organized religion is is very important for a lot of people. I know. Oh, it is, I and a, I see that, and the, and it, it's and and it's needed for for the individuals that that uh-huh. want it and need it. It's <clears throat> it's a great community for them, and definitely, Absolutely. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not, um, but you know, um, you know, you. It's there, right? And we can look at dreams. We can look at prophecies. We can look at so many different things that have been written. Joseph in the Bible, right? Joseph and and his and his colored coat, and uh-huh. what he saw with the pharaohs and. Um, and the cook you know. and everything, yeah. <clears throat> well, it's, it's true, and I think it's, I, you know, I have friends that I, I struggle totally with constantly because they are so into their religion that they don't leave room for their own power. And and it's right for them now. It gives them comfort. It gives them solace. It's a, it's, it's the right place for them. And, and you know, I, I listen, but I don't say anything because that's not my belief system, but they're certainly entitled to theirs, and it's important to them, and it's as real to them as my philosophy is to be. So we all have a right to, um, to, to our belief systems, whatever they are. And, and, and I truly believe they are unique unto every individual. No, I agree with you. And that goes right back to the free will, doesn't it? We were given free uh-huh. will when we came here, whether it's from a UFO or whatever else. I'm being quite facetious. <laughs> but um, I, I'm really, I really believe in that. And that um, I think we're right to our own belief system also, as long as there's no harm. You know, if, as long oh, as yeah. there is no harm, then, you know... I think that's that's the main thing. If we have a strong belief system that is um, not harmful, then more power to it. Well, sure. Um, we, so where where do you think dreams come from then? I think they come from our subconscious. I think some of them come from hmm. This is, I think, 
I think premonitions um, uh-huh. are given to us by a sixth sense or or um, God, I don't even know the word barb um, a knowing a greater knowing right. Well, if like you people look at say, the well, you're a psychic. Well, how do I know I'm a psychic? I'm just told by a higher being or higher spirits that yeah. there is something there, higher spirits. So dreams come from higher spirits. Dreams could also be um, from a past life. They could be... Um, um, well, the, the spirit that we carry within us has has connection to higher to cosmic consciousness so Mm -hmm. it's a wonderful it's a wonderful way for the spirit within to connect us to the greater wisdom that is accessible to us um our body physical is our avatar and and the mind that i equate with the soul is our personality and our ego and you know the the that which is guiding us sort of through this lifetime and then the spirit is the spirit is what rides within the avatar the spirit is what goes lifetime to lifetime to lifetime and the spirit is what works through around over or without the ego to to help us to tell guide us on this particular journey that we're on Yes. I'm just looking. I bought this book today, and it's the, um, because like I said, I was trying to find my dream book, uh, The Tibetan Yogas of Dream and Sleep. And I don't know if you've heard Uh of that. Heard of it, not read it. Okay, so it's quite interesting. I've just started it. Um, And, of course, I I have not finished it. It's quite a a deep book. so I'm not even going to quote or anything from it because um, I have not read it. It's, it looks to be very interesting, though. Um, and there's different levels of sleep, like you and I know. Anybody listening hopefully realizes um, it's, it's going to be quite the book. Um, well, you want to you want to give out the different levels of sleep there are, so people who aren't familiar with them can kind of understand where you're coming from. Okay, so it also has the nature of a dream, which is dream in reality. Everybody uh-huh. dreams, whether we remember dreaming or not. We dream as infants and continue dreaming until we die. Every night we enter into an unknown world. We may seem to be our ordinary selves or someone completely different. Um, The first step in dream practice is one must recognize the potential dream holes for the spiritual journey. So let me just find the... um, Oh dear. Three kinds of. Oh, th- this is. Um, you're talking about dra- three kinds of dreams. Some seric dreams, dreams of clarity, and clear light dreams. Do you know uh-huh. these, Barb? You've done so many shows on dreams. You had one that I was listening to. And I went to find his book, One, Two, Three, Dreams. Um, oh, Jason Bo- D- uh, DeBoer, yeah. Yes. Yes, I couldn't find his book. It's just a small store. Um, yeah. And it, he... Um, a very good link, by the way, your show with him. I'm thinking, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I need that. Um, what started this is I'd had that dream with my brother, and we were trying to peel the layers away. So, uh-huh. um, and then I was talking to a friend, and she'd had a dream, and she has recurring dreams, and with recurring themes in her dreams. So it's, um, I'm getting all discombobulated now. Um, okay, well, um, well, what um, I was um, talking about, what I was talking about at, at one point somewhere back there was <clears throat> we have brain waves and we have um, alpha, beta, theta, delta, gamma waves. And each of them is a different wavelength as far as sleep goes. And and to be in alpha is basically the, um, the 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 place where you want to be. It's a it's a it's a if you're in alpha, that's where um, people who are animal communicators are able to put their consciousnesses in in order to. Uh, Work with animals or or children or it, it's it's a it's a wonderful level and it's 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 hertz levels and delta okay, um, H-E-R-T-Z, yeah and and the delta waves are are the deepest levels of sleep and um, theta waves are the ones that we usually have when we're in um, meditation and beta waves are what we're in right now. That's, you know, where we are right now. Lucy. And then, um, <laughs> and, and gamma rays are, are the waves that are the fastest of the brain waves and they process information and stuff like that. So, so it's different wavelengths, brain activity, wavelengths. And, and a lot of, a lot of people who do sleep interpretation and stuff, Look for the different wavelengths to know where you are. Um, you know, alpha's alpha's a great place to go. So, and that's where mediums go. That's where psychics go. That's where intuitives usually go when they are trying to when, when they're communicating with other realms or getting into other states of mind, letting go of their own ego and merging with someone else's energy. That's where I was going. <laughs> That's where you were going. Okay, I totally misinterpreted, misunderstood that um, because I'm looking at this book and it's got charts and and um, whatever else, and I'm thinking, I don't know. I've I've just I've just done a a wobble. It's the realms it has are God, demigod, human, animal, hungry ghost, and hell. Oh my! And it, yes. Oh my! <laughs> I'm going. This isn't where I wanted to go. I haven't read this, and it is, um, you know, it, it's not what I've practiced or known before, which is good because I'm I'm right into learning. Well, and I think Jen, I, I think basically you you will be guided to the to the right place, you know, by you know books will fall in your lap and stuff like that. Oh well, I know, and I think this one did today because I was with my girlfriend and we were both sort of laughing because we were um, um, picking different books out and. Uh-huh. Um, it's not that I was I, I went for the one specific book and not to be had. I will find it though. Um you know, these other books talk about keeping and so did Jorson Bohr talk about keeping a, a journal of your own um dreams, mm-hmm. your own dream journal, your own dream symbols, um and I don't write mine down so much anymore, but I do know what different symbols to me mean, and they may not mean the same thing to you. 
Um, and so I think the symbols or or um, whatever we're showing in our dreams are as individual as we are. Like a ring mm-hmm. to you, a hand, a ring on a hand to you might mean something entirely different to me. Oh, definitely. Or, um, yeah. Or an owl or, you know, people say, oh, an owl's a, a you know, something foreboding. <laughs> well, and or I don't wisdom. see it that way at all. Yeah. Yeah, it could be wisdom. It, to me, it, it means a change. Um, and so it's it's funny, but I can, you know, something like that in a dream. Um, it, it's not necessarily the same for everybody. So the dream books, when you pick up a dream book and turn to the, for a shoe, you're so, showing a shoe in a dream. Um, what does that mean? Well, it's it's not that simple, right? No, so. and I think it's in, it's important not not what dream books say, but what you feel it means to you, and mm-hmm. you know that's that's the the important thing that people should be um, comfortable with allowing themselves to to if they're getting a symbol of any sort over and over again to really work on what does it mean to me what is this what does this mean you know what what should i take from this symbol um and uh i was i was by the way um that dreams 123 by jason deborg yes if you go to my website, uh, it's in the book section, and the link to it on Amazon is right there. Oh, good. Okay. I was trying to um, honestly support our local economy. didn't quite work, <laughs> although I did buy a book from them, so that was great. But Okay, yeah. <laughs> I will be going to um, get the book through Amazon now. <laughs> No, it's, so, it's just uh, on, on my website, the I highly recommend section in the book section, um, the, uh, the the link to Jason's book is right there. Oh, perfect. You've got such a wonderful... Um, well, I've mopped that up. Um, I just sent you the link. Good. But be, but you know, interpreting dreams is is so much fun because there's so many different levels you can get into. Um, I know that um, I had uh, a boyfriend a long time ago that that uh, I was with for on and off for 12 years, and so he was he was one of the major people in my life, and um, so uh, it, it's you know kind of. Uh, you know, we we at one point went to Woodstock, and when we got there, we were surrounded. It was like it was snowing. Um, um, the milkweed pod, you know, they had burst open, and, and we would go into mm-hmm. the store and look out the window, and it would be absolutely clear. And we would walk outside, and we'd be overwhelmed with this this flood of these milk pod things, and it's like the it's like the storm of the milk pod the seeds you know followed us around it was the most amazing thing i've ever seen a number of years later <clears throat> he passed away and um every now and then out of nowhere will come a a flood of these milk pod seeds from nowhere and it will be kind of like it's a symbol that he's around and you know, people will be looking around saying, where the hell did they come from? And, and it's it's kind of like, you know, I know that, that he's around because that's so symbolic of a very special time in our life. Now, for no one else would, that, would the milkweed pods mean the same thing, but all I need to do is see them and know that, that Stephen is around. 
So it's important that we make up our own interpretations for the different symbols that we seem to be getting over and over again. And it's what they mean to you that is the interpretation for your seeing them in your dreams or in your everyday life. No, I, 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 I totally agree with that. With dreams, um, I know that when we're in the middle of a dream, if we're scared, if we're if we don't like the way it's going, we can absolutely ask and change for the direction of that dream, because I've done it. Like, ooh, I don't like okay. where this is going. You know, um, uh-huh. I wanna I wanna get out of here, and we can. Yeah. I've I've done it, um, and I've hopefully taught my kids that. And a few other people, um, I know that for a fact. Um, and I don't know how long I've done that for. But even, you know, your recurring dreams, uh-huh. um, seeing the same, walking the same path or trying to get to the end of a road or into the store or wherever, the building, you know. Um, well, you know, they dreams absolutely um, tell us something. My mother had dementia, and she was in a nursing home. And for for over a month, maybe two months, two months, she would say, "I had a dream last night. I dreamed I got to the front door of." the nursing home and I wanted to go home and a cab came up and I I don't know the address of home. Now my mother of course knew the address of home. Mhm. But, you know, I and I said to her, "Well, you know, when it's right, you'll think of it and it'll come and all of that." It wasn't until after she passed that I realized she wanted to go home to the other side. She didn't want to go home to the home that we I lived in with her. She wanted to go home to the other side. Yeah. And and so, you know, sometimes it takes retrospect, and sometimes our dreams are just, they. I, I think that the important thing for people to understand is there there also has to be a sense of humor in, in all of this. It's not... It's not so serious that we, we forget our sense of humor because... I had a recurring nightmare. It wasn't a nightmare. I wasn't I didn't wake up in a sweat, upset, anything like that. I dreamt I was at my own wake. And I was in the back of the room and there were lots of people there. And um people were going up to the coffin and people were, you know, especially my friends were looking in and saying, "Look at that. Why did she ever wear her hair that way? It's just so perfect for her." And I'm sitting, I'm standing in the back saying, what do you mean it's so perfect for me? And, you know, I kept trying to get up to the front to check out what my hair should have been, you know, what I should have done with my hair that I hadn't done with my hair. And um, I could I could never make it up to the front to see how they had fixed my hair laying me out. And about... Gosh, three months later, at the time I had very long hair, and I cut it really short because I got so sick of the long hair. I just cut it very short. I never had that dream again. It's not funny. So, so it's you know, I mean, it can it can be simple things and it can be profound things. So, you know, don't don't always look for deep philosophical meaningful things to your dreams. Sometimes it's just telling you to, to lighten up. Yeah, sometimes um, a dream is just a dream. And I've said that to to a few people. Sometimes a dream is just a dream. There's there's no more meaning than that in it. You know? Um, well yeah. And it isn't just the night dreams either. It's the daydreams as well. They count. And pay attention I to find them my as dreams well. During the day, yeah. Yeah. My dreams during the day if I nap. Um, the other day, I was just knackered. 
great white coat, and I had to sleep. I was just, it was, there was no question. And I can't even remember what my dream was now. And it was like a fast, quick, heavy sleep. And I woke up and I thought, holy smokes, that was quite some dream. And I remembered it at the time. Um, but I was just sort of like, holy, you know, don't know what that was all about. Was it because I was overtired? Was it because under stress? Don't know. I don't usually um, sleep that heavy during the day. I have a hard time <laughs> sleeping anyhow. But for whatever well, reason. <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> excuse me, to, there's something going on with the earth core. It is um, wobbling. And because of that, the earth energy is wobbling. And that will tire or invigorate, depending on where you are on your own flow chart. And <clears throat> now the earth the earth core has wobbled always. You know, it, it, it rotates one direction and then another direction every I, I don't know what the time frame is, but there's a pattern to it. And and so when it when we go through those shifts and we're at a dead st- standstill, everybody sort of gets a little drained, and yet it's a perfect time for downloads, so a perfect reason to do a lot of sleeping. And just about everybody I talk to that is in the field one way or another is finding they're sleeping a tremendously greater period of time than than normal for them. Well, I definitely am right now. Like I said, and I'm yawning right now, and I'm so sorry. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm not a great sleeper. I never have been. Um, stress is a bit more, whatever. You know, uh-huh. stress comes and goes in our lives. Um, but the, um, the day sleeper, the naps, and I love naps. Like, who doesn't like a oh, good yeah. nap? But this is this is this was more than a nap. It was like a really hard sleep, and it was a uh-huh. big dream. And it's like holy smokes! Um, but being knocked off kilter and more tired than usual, definitely, definitely. Well, it's, and it's a t- it's a time you should be writing. All of us should be. I think so, and I think the ones that um, I've, I've got a couple of girlfriends, and it's like, yeah, you guys are fantastic writers. Um, uh-huh. It is. It would be a, a, an incredible time for them to start writing. Like, put their put their thoughts, notions, ideas down, and and get going with it. You know, um, I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I didn't say a thing. <laughs> no, I could hear you loud and clear, though, Barb. I could hear well, you I I, I I it it's the same for me. I am finding I am doing more writing now than I have in in the last couple of years. It's 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 almost a compulsion. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff to write, and you know, it's staring me straight in the face, and it's it's uh it's a long time ago my mother wrote a poem and one of the one of the lines in the poem was then everything that i said i would do is staring me straight in the face and that's what i that's what i'm finding and you know it's it's <clears throat> it's not like there's an hourglass with the sands running out it's just it's time come on take the energy use it because if you don't use it now when it's easy, you know, you'll you'll have to struggle a little harder later on when you choose to do it. So it's up to it's up to the individual. But I think is. writing is you know, writing is a 
is a gift, and, and it's a great way of recording our thoughts, our philosophies, our hopes, wishes, dreams. And I think there's a new moon around, or it's just happened, or something like that. And that's a wonderful time to to list, you know, your hope, your hopes and your aspirations. So, um, you know, it's funny we have such simple tools available to us at all times, and so frequently we just neglect to take them, to use them. We do. I know that there's a couple of people, and I've said to them, you know, like I just said, start writing. Um, and now is the perfect time. We've put it off the last few years. Um, it's a it's a perfect time, and use our dreams as the as the trampoline or the springboard to to just get into it and start doing it. Um, it would be it would be wonderful, right? So yeah, and you know, and it's it's amazing because you know you do you do unbelievable poetry, and um, I don't know what you've done with your poetry. You were gonna put it up on a website. I don't know if you actually did or not, but um, I've got some on my website, Barb, but I haven't written in a while. Um, I was not going to say, um, no, I haven't written in a while. I have, I don't know, I've shied away from it. It's it's funny you say that because the ladies, the grand girls, the ladies as I call them, one of them is quite the little writer and um, the other one has started to write too and I look at them and you think, I think... Where does this come from? This this depth of emotion, yeah. <clears throat> or or the sense of of the knowing, and well, we know where it comes from. It comes from a greater understanding. They've been here before, in my opinion. Um, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a homework assignment, and anybody who's listening who feels the same need to write but don't know what or how or or whatever. There is a website called StoryWorth, and what it is is you sign up, and <clears throat> once a week they will send you a question about your life, mm-hmm. and you you write the answer to it. You can put you can put photographs with it if you want, and you send it back to them. And at the end of a year's time, they publish it in a hardcover book for you. What and a great idea! I did this, well, uh, my my daughter-in-law gave it to me as a Mother's Day present a number of years ago. Now, I have to admit, during that year when I got the questions, I cursed her and I thanked her alternately. And I when, I saw the, when I saw the book all together, I thought, what an amazing present, because they were insightful questions about my life, my philosophy, my belief system, how I related to my family, how, you know, and they were simple questions, but if you take them seriously, you learn a tremendous amount about yourself. And it's a great gift to give children and grandchildren, um, down to, you know, theory, philosophy on love, philosophy on um relationships for you know i mean it it's it's the questions seem very simple and yet you can take them as deeply as you want to take them and in the end i wrote almost 400 pages of stories about my life that um they probably would never have asked me the question for and and i and happily i have all the family pictures so i mean one of them was Tell me about the family homes you've lived in, and I happen to have the pictures of family homes going back to the 1800s. So I put them in. But you know, um, you know, uh, stories about my grandparents that my grandchildren never will have known, but should know about. And so, and I think it costs a hundred dollars, but. Um, it's well worth it, and 
once a week and and you know there were times that I had six or eight of them just sitting there staring me in the face and I gritted my teeth and I answered them and you can change to another question if you don't like the question they send you but um I found that that it was so insightful and I learned so much about myself it was 100% worth doing it and it's almost worth doing it again and and just not telling them I'm doing it because it forced me to sit and write once a week about my life. And, um, you know, today the way things are, we just don't, we, we don't have the ability or, or the opportunity to sit and talk to our children and our grandchildren about family history and stuff like that. It's They've got to get it on the fly or hope that Ancestry has something in it and when they need to look up something or or whatever, but I I would sign up for that. And and if you know if you use it to write poetry too, you don't have to even use their questions. You can you know once a week send them something about your life. And, I think that's um, a great idea. It's part it's, of being a good ancestor too, isn't it? It is. And you know I think one of the questions was. Um, what was your favorite television show when you were growing up? <clears throat> well, when I was young, TV hadn't been invented yet. And I remember my father bringing home the very first TV, and the screen was no bigger than, than that of a tablet. And the, 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 the pattern thing showed constantly, and then once or twice a day, like at 6 o'clock for the news and maybe one later on, but there were no programs, really. And, you know, then it evolved, and it wasn't until the 80s that they started doing 24-7 programming. So, um, you know, television was not existent when I was a, a young ch- child. And, and then, of course, Howdy Doody and Captain Video and the Video Rangers came into being and stuff like that. But it was interesting for me to go back and see just what were the early shows, and you know what were the ones that that impacted me and it it, it gives you a chance to examine your life without having to it, it it's like a life review without dying is what it is <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really good that's really Try good it. i'm going to i'm going to it's um i've got to open a window here Put some of our cold, cold air in. Um, whew. Um, no, I think that's a great idea. I think being a good ancestor is is what we all have to practice, actually, or well, I should learned, try to practice. I learned about my family history by being bored to death every Sunday when my grandmother came to dinner. And, I mean, I don't have that option with my grandchildren. I can't bore them to death every Sunday with stories of family. So this this book did it for me. And, well, and we... you know, <laughs> I mean, one of the questions was, what is the stupidest thing you've ever done? And I, I wrote about it. And... and um, it was stupid, but but you know I put it down there. I thought, okay, let let them know that Grandma is uh, has moments too. So I mean, it wasn't a relationship thing. It was, but but you know, every now and then we do something that is just so stupid you can't believe that you did it, and you really hope nobody knows about it, and then you think you have to tell people because no one would believe you'd really do something that stupid, you know? So. Oh, I know, I know. But but it's it's life. It's it's and the questions were just amazing, and um, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed doing it. And I I did tell Carol that that um, I thought it was it was a great gift. She gave it to her mother too, but her mother um, just isn't one who writes. So you know, and it's it's not a good gift if somebody doesn't write. And uh, but you write. And I think that it would be great for you to be able to tell stories about your your childhood 
so that at some point in time your grandchildren can pick up a book and, and read about just what it was like growing up as you. I hope so. I think that it would have been very good for our parents. Um, I'm just learning about my dad's family, um, which is really kind of interesting because there's no one left. Uh-huh. Um aunties, uncles, you know, uh, um, my dad died quite young. My mom did. Um, So, you know, we want to keep that going on. And, um, you know, I think that the more we know, the better off we are. Um, And it's just passing down knowledge. Mm-hmm. Passing down knowledge. So the kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, whatever, can say, this is what it was like. And it's also finding out that the siblings, like my dad had a different, he had the same parents, um, as the aunties, but also different because he was so much younger. Uh So there wasn't as much time to be spent with him. You know, his mother was out working. Um, He has a totally different outlook or had a totally different outlook on his mother than he did um, on his... on his... um, than his sister did. Uh-huh. You know, his sister, my aunt had told me great things about his, about their mother, my grandmother. I don't remember her. Um, he doesn't have any good memories of her, which is too bad. Well, so. I, you know, I happily had pictures and stories and stuff like that that I could share and and did and just kind of feel like, you know, maybe there's more. And so I'm not going to do it this week. I've got, or next week or the week after probably, but I have a whole bunch of projects that are sitting on my desk looking at me, and it's like, okay, I will get to you and I will do you. And lots of stuff for the website. And um, so, so there, you know, I, I think, I think for those of us who are, I, I, I'm older than you, but, 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 you know, within, 10 or 15 years anyhow and it's it's i think there's a a need to chronicle stuff a need to write stuff down and if we need to have something hanging over our heads is saying to us write me write me then that's a good way to start um and and it it uh once you get going once you open the floodgates then it's hard to stop but but it's yes. important important to you know if you want to write about your dreams write about your dreams do a dream journal create a whole workbook of these are what these symbols mean to me um you know work with yourself to develop something that will be a a wonderful uh prognostication tool you know um so uh you know just don't let these moments go by without doing something and don't so that you're sitting you know, in, in in three months, six months, whatever, saying, "Gee, I wish I had done that." And don't wish; make it happen. Oh, I agree. I agree. It, it's um, sitting down, taking the time, and making a conscious effort. Uh huh. Right. So. Oh yeah, and you can always find laundry to do, or <laughs> cleaning to do, or gardening. There is always a remarkably good excuse, but but in the end, um, all they are are excuses that that help you to avoid doing something that would have been of a creative nature that would have changed your life. That's exactly right. You're very wise, Barb. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but... No, it's true. It's true. Well, I appreciate that. But, you know, let let your dreams guide you. 
you can you can ask in in dream state. You know, when you go to bed, say, "Give me a topic to write on tomorrow," and when you wake up, take the topic and write on it, even if it's a four line poem. Well, I know. But you know. Some people go to bed and they say, I'm going to sleep on this. And they get a solution to their questions. They get a solution to a problem they're having. Um, answers come pretty easy when they, they're they relaxed. They're in a conundrum. Uh-huh. And um, why not for anything else, like you just say, um, for writing? Just sleep on it. Uh- I mean, isn't it isn't it a little sad in that, you know, people will um be very conscious about what they're eating and read up on what's right what's good and what's bad. People will go and exercise, they will do all sorts of things to stretch their muscles, to give themselves greater flexibility and all of that. And our mind is very much like a muscle. That if you exercise it, it becomes stronger, it becomes more focused and and yet people don't think about the fact that, that consciousness is something that needs to be worked and, and stretched and, and utilized too. And so if you, if you work with that aspect of your body as well, then, then you have the whole complete deal working together instead of just let your, letting your consciousness you know, glide along for the ride and never do any work. But put it to work. Stretch it. Um, you know, nobody says you have to publish everything. Nobody says you have to do anything with with anything except write it. Because when you open the floodgates to that, if you open the portal to your higher consciousness, then all sorts of wonderful material will come out. You just have to open the door. It does. It does. I've got books or um tablets, writing tablets. With I keep everything. Uh-huh. And it, it goes back years. I was saying that to a friend. We were walking around the track the other night. And I've got all this stuff. It's tucked away. It doesn't have to be read. It doesn't... It's just there. It, um, it gets you through. It got me through a lot of stuff. Um, sure. And it's... You know, I look back on it and I think, oh, did I write that? Um, <laughs> did I write that? Yeah, so yeah, I think opening I... our minds and, and but but exercising our minds too is is one of the best things we can do. We don't get stale. No, you know, and um, you know, and you can you can make it even a game with your with your grand grandchildren. Every day you take a letter of the alphabet and you have to write a poem on it. And you know, it can be uh, it can be two line, it can be a haiku, it can be you know, you just have to write something on that letter. And it can Actually, be Actually, that's it, a really good idea. I'm going to start doing that. I mean, the first letter has to be a uh, or it, 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 the first letter of the first one has to be a. And yep. once you're through the once you're through the alphabet once you go through it again and you can't repeat. So uh you know, it's sort of like it's challenging yourself, it's stretching yourself. And you know, and I I promise you the more you play with this the more exciting it gets. But um if you if you if you have made the decision to go through the alphabet, you can skip around on letters, but you have to complete it totally before you can start again. So, no, and um, I think that's a great way for getting getting the young kids to learning how to read and to write and to comprehend. Uh-huh. Um, you know, um, write you know write down your dream last night, whether they remember their dreams or not. You know, um, well, they it's have getting such open imagine- their imagination. <clears throat> Well, that's what I was going to say. A young child has such an open imagination that they don't have to go to sleep to dream. They can do it while they're wide awake. It isn't until we get older that we that we become very secretive and controlling and everything. But yeah, 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 children aren't that way at all. 
Yeah. We're told to stop twirling, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. Quit twirling. You can't twirl. But it's true. So but I'm extremely tired, Barb, so um I wanna thank you. I'm gonna close this after an hour. I think we're on an hour. Yeah. Um I don't know where I'm at. I, all I know is I'm at my house. I, <laughs> yeah. Good place to be. Yes, it is. Tonight it is. And I want to thank you very much. Totally my pleasure. For and I look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Next time, I know. I know. We'll, we'll figure it out. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Work with the alphabet. Work with the... (laughs) Thank you, Barb, and thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. Good night now.